Welcome back to the channel. Amidst this time of utter planetary meltdown, don't worry. Thankfully, the bunker is in the middle of a 400 hectare airfield and there is not a soul around, so we're all free and healthy. Anyway, uh, it is up to us to provide you with the much needed escapism and entertainment of Modern Classics Season 2. And we're starting with this, the Gen 2 997 GT3 RS. But this car is no ordinary GT3 RS. Uh, I want to draw your attention to the number plate. Um, this car is actually a very special car to me personally. These last three characters here, HBY, uh, this is actually Porsche UK's press car, or it was a, at least originally their press car. When this car launched back in 2009, uh, it was ultimately registered as a, a 2010 car. But when I was reading and researching and beginning to really go to the next level of um, enjoyment and interest in cars, this exact Porsche GT3 RS basically graced the front cover of every major automotive publication in the UK at some point. So this car effectively has been thoroughly spanked. We'll get onto that shortly because it has done the rounds uh, through pretty much every automotive journalist out there. Um, and why it's significant is because for me, this was a car that I aspired to, not just the Gen 2 GT3 RS, this car. I read about this car as I was coming up through the ranks, as it were. Um, and I think at the time that this car launched, it was a really important time for the car world because it launched at a similar time as the Ferrari 458 Italia. Now, those cars are worlds apart. This is a thoroughbred, stripped out, manual driver's car. And at the time, the 458 Italia was a cutting edge, twin clutch, almost fighter jet tech of a car uh, that was coming in as this car was going out. And at that time, there was quite a lot of talk in the press, and in the media about this being the last of a generation and you know, how fantastic this car was to drive, which we'll share with you shortly on our track. But interestingly, I would argue that this car and the manual as a whole has come full circle. And I would say they're even more important now than they were when this car launched because everything's gone sort of twin clutched and turbocharged and everyone's chasing lap times. Um, cars like this, they're not necessarily about lap times now. They were, when it launched, this managed a uh, just over seven minute 30 around the Nürburgring. Today, that seems slow by you know, most supercar standards, but this was 10 years ago. So an incredible achievement then. And um, yeah, I just like to really set some context as to how important this car is to me personally, but also the British automotive media scene. Those three letters there, very special stuff. Anyway, now the context is out of the way, let's do a walk and talk of the car. This was the last of a very special engine in the 997 generation Porsche. It was known as the Metzger engine because it was designed by a clever fellow called Hans Metzger, who effectively applied motorsport developed technology and put it into a road car. So this is the last of the Metzger engines, or at least the last of the 3.8 Metzger engines. Uh, there was a very end of the run special edition car called the RS4 liter, same Metzger engine, only bored up to four liters, developing more power. But arguably this is the sweet spot car. Again, we'll talk about how it drives once we get out on the track, but you know, it didn't have solid mounted rose joints like the RS4 Lita did. So when you're out on our British bumpy B roads, this is the more sort of finely tuned car. Anyway, so what makes this an RS? Well, wider track, lighter weight, more power, lots of carbon, big carbon wing here, plexiglass window. That is not only for the weight saving, but the amount of sound that comes through when you're in the car versus having a solid piece of glass there is actually fascinating. And also on this car I have the extra sticky Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires. This is actually an evolution, a completely new tire versus the uh, tire which launched with this car. And actually an experiment which I would love to do at some point is to find out the gains in performance and lap times versus the tire which it was launched on versus the tire that it's come on today. Fantastic compound. This was also specced as the sort of most lightweight version of the car that you could get. I'll show you inside shortly because there's no sat nav. I'm not even sure this car has aircon, but importantly, the uh, carbon ceramic brakes on this were an optional extra. Now, 10 years ago to have these on was actually a pretty big deal. And then there's 
telltale signs of this being a wider car because it has these arch extensions here. Now, this was actually the first GT3 RS model to have a wider front track uh, than its counterpart, the more standard and road biased GT3. So these things here are what indicates that. I believe it's a 20 millimeter wider front across the axle. And then obviously, because it's a bit more of a track focused car, we have slightly more aero. So down here, look, we have a deeper front splitter. And then as we move around the car, I think one of the things as well that really stands out, particularly from this view, is just how wide the rear arches were. This car was so much wider than the standard 911 at that time. And all of these components added up to it just being lower, wider, stickier, more downforce, more ground effect. Um, yeah, which ultimately at that time led to a, I think it was a seven minute 33 around the Nürburgring, which for a manual car of that time was actually incredible. In fact, if, if I was to go out and do a 730 now in my, in my manual 991 GT3, uh, I'd probably pat myself on the, the back because that is a remarkable time for a car like this of that era on road tires. And don't forget a completely different compound back then too. Now we find ourselves back around to the rear. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is this was also running uh, a titanium exhaust system. Together with that Metzger engine, you've got to remember now, we've got things in place that we didn't have back then. No fuel particulate filter. So right now cars are being subject to uh, fuel particulate filters to help with CO2 emissions. Uh, while that's great for the environment, not great for the sound and audible delight that this thing makes. Once again, this, this engine is so organic. It is the last of an old school breed of motorsport developed engines. Uh, and again, stick around for the uh, track session because this thing sounds incredible. So uh, I think with those uh, highlights out of the way, we shall jump inside and run you through what makes this the extra lightweight model. All right, so first of all, look at this. A key, an actual real key with a, with a key on the end of it. <laughs> it's, uh, it's amazing. I mean, this car, you wouldn't really class it as old, would you? But when you get in it, it's so Spartan. Now what's fantastic is seeing uh, actual physical instrument clusters. There's no flat screens or something. It's the iconic five cluster Porsche style instrument display there. And it's just so nice. I mean, it's like I say, it's not that old, but there's still this nostalgic element just being in it. It's fantastic. And we've got things like this look, rather than door handles, pull tags. I mean, they don't save a great deal of weight, but it's just a tip of the hat to the ethos of the car. It's all about saving weight. And speaking of saving weight, uh, in this car, as I, m I mentioned on the outside, this has been taken to the next degree. The Porsche press car was specced with no sat-nav. <laughs> so that was an optional extra to untick the box if you really wanted it to be a more sort of thoroughbred driving experience. And you could even spec it without aircon if you really wanna just dedicate this to track use only. Um, and then steering wheel, I mean, even though it's nice to have all of the mod cons sometimes on a steering wheel, look at it, it's just a wheel. There is no volume buttons, there's no anything on here. It's just you and the wheel. This is 31,000 miles of heavily used Alcantara and it still feels great. I say 31,000 miles, these are not daily driver miles. These are press car miles. I cannot stress to you the, the beating that this car will have had over these years, 10 years, 31,000 miles of press miles. This is track, this is road trips, this is road tests, this is car of the years. I mean, this car, you will have seen it somewhere. If you are a petrol head and you were growing up on cars over the last 15, 20 years, this car would have definitely graced your eyeballs at some point. Now, I just actually had a quick look in the glove box to look through the service history of the car. And I came across something quite cool. Uh, in the front of the uh, driver's manual, there is a very short paragraph on the quote, development philosophy of the car. Just that paragraph in itself got me quite excited because it is very, it basically summarizes what this car is all about. So this is from the words of Porsche themselves. Development philosophy. The Porsche 911 GT3 and 911 GT3 RS stand for sports cars with an exceptional performance, both on the road and on the race circuit. 
This is where it gets quite cool. The objective means that in the event of any compromise being required between sportiness and comfort during the development process, the tendency will be geared more towards sportiness. How awesome is that? And then it just goes on. The result can be brake squeal with light pressure applied. That's just a signature sound of uh, more driver focused brakes as they need some heat in them. Uh, rough engine operation in speed at around 3000 RPM. In comparison to the modern day GT3 engines, when we start this up in a minute, it sounds like someone has thrown a bag of nails into the cogs in your engine. It is so motorsport and so raw and pure, but that's what's special about this car. It's not about its out and out speed, it's how visceral and how engaging it is. So um, I think on that note, we should probably do that. We should probably take you out on track and engage you in just how immersive it is to drive uh, one of the last greatest Mexican engine cars. Mechanical grip from those Michelin. Oh, 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 oh. 
get off the press fleet and sold, but there was just too much love for it. There's too much love from Porsche, there was too much love from journalists, there was too much love from the audience. And so instead of selling it and moving it on, Porsche have decided to inherit this car with a permanent addition to their press fleet. And I have to say, the automotive world is definitely better off for it. Massive thank you to Porsche UK for giving me access to this car. It really is a sort of pinch myself moment. And I hope you guys uh, enjoyed watching it as much as I have it driving it. So, as always, thank you so much for watching. And I shall see you for the next episode of Modern Classics. Very soon.